don't have a pre-circulated agenda other than Google Summer of Code is getting submitted and there's a pull request that's active against the metrics repository <coughs> that I'd like to discuss. Um, Georg, are you going to take notes for this one? Or can yes, I can, and I just posted a link in the chat, so Excellent. feel free to follow along, everyone, and help with filling in the minutes where I fall short. All right, and are there, I guess, before we get started, are there other agenda items that people want to cover, chat about? Besides those two? I just had a quick question about Chaos Con. Okay. And we can give updates from the various working group meetings yeah. as well. Well, and if there is time to discuss the publication thing that we discussed before, I'm happy to stay and have that conversation. Yeah. Well, why don't we um, why don't we just bring that up right now? Um, so there was a discussion in the previous working group, which is Don's. I'm calling it Don. What are we calling the working group again? Um, it is the Common Metrics Working Group. It is not common, my working group. It is a a right. working group. And that's why I asked for the name again, so that I would stop <laughs> calling it Don's Working Group and, and call it the Common Metrics Working Group. So in the Common Metrics Working Group meeting, which was just before this. Toby raised a question, which I think has been in the background of our discussions for some time. But we've never gotten concrete about it, which is at what point are we going to publish version and release the definitions of metrics that we're coming up with in such a way that customers of different kinds of organizations can reference these definitions uh, when, when talking about them. So we're not going to probably send a business organization to our GitHub repository. We're probably going to need some kind of release of the metrics definition similar to what I've seen in other kinds of Linux Foundation working groups. And, and so that, that question exists now. Um, it's been asked and, and so I'd like to throw open this question of when and how and under what circumstances might we release a version of our chaos definitions for these metrics. So if no one wants to say anything, yeah, I will, uh, add, I will add that um, just as we were talking about that in relation to software releases, just as software, thanks to CI, has moved into uh, shipping uh, two or three times a day or continuous delivery, uh, I'm a strong proponent of continuous delivery for standards work too, um, having worked in the web standard space for a long time and having seen um, the issues um, that well, basically the conflict around HTML uh, from two different working groups, uh, two different organizations working on it. So uh, the, uh, the W3C uh, having a uh, long, uh, long release cycles, uh, how software was done a couple of um, years ago, and what we G shipping uh, uh, new versions of the standards every day. And to me, uh, well, the browser vendors have adopted what we G's model. Um, so, I mean, to me, this is a model that tends to work better and thanks to Git, we always have Git hashes as versions if we really need to have something. So I would strongly recommend moving to a solution where um, there is n nothing like a release cycle, but just every time you make a change that has been accepted, this change is published and that's the new version of the standard. Uh, so, you know, just to get the conversation primed. Okay, that, that triggers me. <laughs> um, for people writing tools, it's useful to actually have versions to standardize on. And part of the, the, part of the challenge here is for the metrics that we publish, we want tools available that will implement them. And so something that's continuously being updated and being a moving target will quite frankly disincentivize a lot of tool people. And so if you can at least say that this is version one, this is the baseline, here's a starting point. People can be keeping up and tool vendors, you know, people doing tooling can keep up as it's going along. But I think at least putting a baseline out there with a numbering associated with it so that we have a way of referring to it, um, I think will serve us in, in the long term. 
I can I can say from the perspective of Augur, we we are using a version of the metrics repository so that we can show you which metrics we've implemented and which we haven't. But it is the, the absence of a a, con, a sort of a a canonical release makes yeah. it difficult because there have been dramatic changes in the structures of the repositories that we reference that have a lot of downstream work. So we insulate ourselves from that by working off of our own fork and absorbing those up uh, those changes when we are ready and, and so I, I can i can i've experienced and know the tool pain that you speak of kate well, yeah I, I'm, I'm taking this from the spdx perspective and how yeah. long and the fact that we we really didn't start getting tool adoption until we stopped shifting versions quite so quickly let's put it that way <laughs> um yeah so the other thing is some of the metric metrics are starting to be premature and it might be nice if we could possibly make them uh, a 1.0 or some sort of version of them available at the Open Source Leadership Summit <coughs> as a target to aim at. Mm -hmm. um, so that since we're, you know, since there will be some meetings of the chaos folk there, um, and also it's a good chance to sort of, you know, get more visibility around the project by having a an announce of a release for the first, you know, for a subset of the metrics <laughs> or whatever you feel comfortable about. And yeah. we could oh. ask each. I would ask each working group to put up I have a for both the procedural and also logistical I, uh, half of this is that we could, in theory, set up an organizational page for Project Chaos that's hosted by GitHub. Um, that link, that basically becomes the web page for the Project Chaos site in terms of like this kind of repository. Because um, to give you an example of what I'm talking about, these are like organization pages and I'll drop one. So this is the one that I actually am in charge of for Red Hat and it has absolutely nothing to do with metrics, but I'm throwing it in the um, chat because it kind of defines what we're doing um, we're basically just listing all of the projects that we have a, you know, a stake in and we, um, for lack of a better term, we just keep that all in a, a repo for the web page itself. We could, I would imagine, set something similar up for um, our organization and then we just basically, when a metric got to a release state that we wanted, we could probably just check off some sort of internal flag and say this version of the metric is appropriate for um, um, you know release so to speak and it would display on a page like this however we wanted to just so yeah, that's that's trivial to organize with um, github pages uh, i i agree uh, it gets it get it's even it gets easier like the problem you have is that when you start having versioning after that which is where it starts to be complicated well right and that's and that's a process for all of us to sort of handle but my sense um, Toby here is that you're looking for a public thing to point at which might not necessarily be something that software developers are looking at Right, um, and I, I guess it would, the definition of why, you know, who's the audience for this is going to make a big difference on how you display it. Because if you're looking for, you know, like software developers who might be building tools, then, then, then obviously, uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of what Kate is saying comes to mind. But if you're just looking for something that you want to point clients to, and I agree with that because I've had a number of internal discussions in Red Hat, and it would be great because they say, what kind of metrics are you talking about? You know, and I'm okay with showing them a GitHub page, but, you know, it would be nice to have something cleaner in mind. Yeah, I mean, we have went through at W3C and, and what we G the, the idea of different audiences for a very long time. And even with the huge amount of resources that this, these uh, different standards have in terms of basically all the large tech companies being very involved with them, we've never um, managed to get anything 
concrete and serious in terms of audience breakdown and have them up to date because that's the, that's the other problem and that's my, my biggest concern right is uh, you know the, the minute you start having uh, a number of different versions of stuff and uh, different you know the same stuff for different audiences and obviously some are going to get out of uh, out of date and then and then no one knows what to trust anymore and that's the problem that's the biggest problem i have with github uh, the way the, the stuff is organized in github right now it's pretty much every time I look, and I don't look every week because I'm not involved with the working groups, right? But every time I look, things have moved and changed, and I just don't know what's, what people are working on and what's, you know, what, what the source of truth is. So, so if there was a page where we said this is a source of truth that's versioned at this moment in time, that would solve that, right? If that page is kept up to date. Right, yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. That, that is, yeah. yeah, I mean, so I want to go back to what kind of Kate was suggesting. I, I think we had this discussions in the past, uh, you know, even if it's updated, you know, twice a year, right before each chaos con, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right before one in India and then one in North America, it, you know, we start with twice a year, here's sort of a snapshot of where we stand and here's sort of the implementation related to these metrics. Uh, that might be a good place to start. I mean, having it updated more frequently, that's nice, but you know, I, I think it's better to start walking before we uh, get to that stage. So, you know, that might be a, let's, you know, that might be a good place to start. But. Well, one of the other examples along that line, Ray, that might be worth following here is what we're doing with the SPX license list, where we've got a list of the license IDs and we have a master list and it's versioned, but it's updated roughly quarterly by what people add in. And in some ways the metrics are sort of like these things um, in the sense that everyone sort of agrees that this is a metric we're gonna put in and it's visible and it gets added up to that list. So let me do, give you a list to the SPDX license list. And it's just, it's a static web page to um, Brian's point that's just sort of kept in date. And we have a master, um, We've got, a lit, we've got effectively the same website we've managed to keep going because people also can machine scrape it and things like that. But we've got this one site that we've kept up and going and we, we can maybe create something similar here for chaos, which is, you know, official metrics. And then we just reverse it every time we formally do it. So you sort of see on that page, if you scan down, you'll see version three, four with the date stamp. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see it. I'll put, uh, uh, sorry, oh, I sent it. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> the default is to go to Sean privately, is to post to everyone. Um, so my oh. for <laughs> Sean. Um, yeah, um, I, didn't I, can, I didn't pay attention to chat. I, yeah. <laughs> so there's a GitHub repo behind this license list. And it's automatically generated. We've got scripts to generate it, but it, it gets generated every quarter or whenever they decide that there's enough that's there to change. And so that's sort of the master, but there's a version that the tooling can refer to. And in terms of the metrics uh, here, in terms of the license list, the licenses that are acknowledged on the list. And the SPDX identifier is what's declared in the files. Right, and the SPDX yeah. identifier is what's used in the files. But you know, in the same way that we've got this list here, we could basically have sections of metrics and what are approved metrics within links into the right places and then just have a version of, you know, have a, um, and then that way it's kept up to date. As you say, yeah, I, I, I think this is a, chaos. yeah, I think this is a better way of doing it. Cause I think the one attempt we had, I mean, I think Georg is the one who did most of the work. We try to do like a white paper model and that was just too much work. Right. And then <laughs> the simple table like sure, shaking his head like, yeah, no, I know. I yeah, fully yeah. agree. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that was just too much work. Like, it requires too much coordination because you have to write, like, you know, full sentences and all that. But this one uh, is, it's, yeah, with, you know, just table and links. And, you know, may, we may not even need this many columns. Well, no, yeah. I'm sure you probably won't. But the yeah. fact is you have the full name and then you link to it. We've right. been working on having templated versions of information and each of you clicked on any of those license, the full name links, it would go to a template effectively that's stored in GitHub. It's very close to the type, well, it's the type of template that you're talking about for the metrics. Yeah. So, 
So just to clarify, I'm not sure I understand here. The idea is to have a single page that mm -hmm. then links directly to the GitHub, uh, uh, the, the, con the content on GitHub? Or, or it could be turned into a prettier web, it, or it could be turned into like processed web, a processed template to make it look like a pretty web page. Sure, so, so basically, mm -hmm. and, and it would link to sort of a, a hash on, well, uh, a, a specific version of that page on the GitHub repository, right? Well, it would link to whatever the latest, the, 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 the latest version is. Oh, okay. So it can be, you know, but but that, that's, is, that's exactly what I'm advocating for. So if that's what uh, everyone agrees is the simplest thing to do, I, I agree. That's, I mean, one of the key reasons why I'm, I'm pushing for sort of a model that links to whatever the latest life thing is, is because it's much easier to set up, right? Um, and, and so if that's the kind of model you're looking at, that would be great for me. I, I would, that would be fantastic, especially if everything else can look nice and pretty. Yeah, the well, only difference that I see is, Toby, you want to do it, but every time we update the repo, and Kate is saying we only do it every three to six months. Well, if it links, sorry, sorry, I, I, I cut you, Kate. It's okay. It, it's a scrub. The, the thing is that this gives us a way of deprecating identifiers on the licenses, and if you, you know, as a metric gets, you know, solidified and changed, you may decide that there's a better way of representing, you may want to deprecate your metrics. This will also lets you a way to um, classify that. So it's a top level. And for the most part, once the metrics are up there, the same way we really wouldn't change a, um, we really wouldn't change a license definition unless someone found a bug. Mm -hmm. You probably wouldn't be changing these metrics unless people found a bug. But if you did find a bug, you could update it without, you know, going through a major rev story. You could change, update it on the GitHub page and then it would be showing up here. The thing is, what we're doing is we're cutting our GitHub repo, processing it, generating web pages, and just putting that up. And it's done automatically from the templates that are sitting in our GitHub repo. Uh, those web pages. It's just a question that we only cut it, we only cut a fresh version up here, but GitHub is always being updated to the latest if there's an issue. Yeah, so that's pretty much exactly what I was suggesting would be a great that's solution. Okay. So it sounds like uh, using this model seems to be, I'm, I'm seeing mostly head nods that we, <laughs> we try to do something similar. I, okay. I, have, a, I have one question. And sure. my question is if a few times in the course of doing this, we've gone through the definition of a metric and identified a case where there needs to be something added to the definition because the, a question comes up about how do we handle white mm -hmm. space commits. And how is that accounted for in the definition? Is there, is there room in this model for those kinds of, the kind of evolution of an existing metric definition? Does that work? Yeah, you treat them like bugs effectively. So okay. what you're doing is, you know, you're putting it up here. Everyone's agreed that this is one that we are formally classifying as a chaos metric. And it's, it's got a link here and it's pointing to the web page that's been generated from our GitHub repos. Um, the GitHub repos will get updated behind the scenes, and then next time a new version comes up to generate the web pages, um, that information gets encompassed. Okay, that makes sense. All right. One concern that we've also discussed in the past is merging the metrics from the different repos that we have right now. With this model, can we generate this across different repos, or do we have to merge it together? We should be able to, I think it's a question of if you use the, if you, you should be able, to, as long as the same templates are formed, used in different repos, I think it's going to be a question of where you're pushing, putting things towards. Um, I, I'm not familiar enough with your structure right now, um, but so, we could probably pull Gary, who helped us set this up, into a discussion and um, see what makes sense. Yeah, I'm sure we can write some scripts to pull from multiple repositories. That shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, cool. you can just have the index file point to the outputs of mm -hmm. the repository uh, the, themselves. Yeah, yeah. That if the work. index files file is manually generated, uh, then that's easy to do. And I imagine that's what you want to do with it, right? So in that case, you can just point to the outputs of different repositories. which can then share like a similar, the same style sheet across uh, origins. 
And make it all look nice and professional, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so if we well, want to set, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and, you know, and, and part of this is not necessarily like professional. The working groups have done a ton of work and yep. nobody, nobody sees it. Yep. And we have no real way to, you know, nobody wants to work on stuff that nobody sees. And so we, we would like to kind of get these out there, the ones that are done so that people can, people can consume yeah. them and Maybe use them for other like stuff. The page of chaos slash metrics. And we put under the chaos community on top level site. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let me just see. Mm -hmm. Community, yeah. And then do slash metrics. Yeah, I think it'll 404 right now on me, but well, maybe, maybe not. Just a second. Uh, actually, we, we actually have a chaos metrics page, but um, repurposing that to actually just be the metrics, metrics now. We're farther along. Yeah, we can repurpose it, no problem. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And and then when people ask what the metrics are, then possibly you know, group them under the growth maturity decline, obviously diversity and inclusion, and then hopefully risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, risk is coming along. We we have um we have some risk metrics in Augur now, actually. Oh, good. The II badging is there yeah. and we're working on implementation of uh, some of the fossology do socks back end. Matt Snell lighting up. There he is. Um, working Ooh. on that. Cool. Um, I found um, there's a new person at the LF who will be working on the CII, and I've invited her into this meeting too. Awesome. So when cool. soon, if, if she ends up showing up here today, I'll introduce her. But um, Jennifer Wolferson. So if you see Jennifer's name, she's now working on the CII stuff. So. Excellent we should hopefully start to be building up critical mass <laughs> for those metrics and make some discussions there. Yes, I think we are. Um, okay. So publication of metrics, who's, do we want to set a date of sometime for the re a release onto this website of before, let's say vaguely before and have the working groups take up which before the Linux Foundation Leadership Summit, the 12th ish of March, and do we want to have, hand it to the working groups to identify the metrics that they want to try to release by then? And then, um, Georg, uh, do you want to take a task or do you want me to take the task of coordinating the release into a format on the website? Yeah, I think for the first one, we can do it manually so that we basically prototype what we want it to look like. And then once we have that for the second release, we can work on tooling that starts automating this. Well, okay. you, you will need some tooling to turn whatever pages you have now into web pages, right? Yeah. So that's what you need to do now. The, the, the index thing you can do manually and you probably will want to do it manually all the time anyway, because it has to go through the approval process, right? I'm not yes. quite sure what what it all looks like. It's something that I will discover as we go. If someone has done this before, feel free to. I've done arc down to HTML conversion. It's not always tidy, but there's processes I've used for that in my own case. Maybe so, Georg, why don't you note that you and I will discuss. So that. one of the things that we do have is um, on the website as we have it right now, we can just pull in content from the repository. And so we could build a script that pulls down all the information and creates one file that then gets loaded into the website. I'm talking about the WordPress chaos.community website. And if okay. you load markdown files, it can load HTML files. Okay. Okay, so, so let's if, take, go ahead. If you uh, want to discuss this offline, and if you want suggestions as like how to architect that, I'm more than happy to answer those questions. I mean, I've done that kind of stuff like multiple times using GitHub pages or other systems, and it's actually not a lot of work to do. So I'm, I'm more than happy to help uh, set something up if um, there's want on your side. Just feel free to ping me offline. Yeah, uh, I'll send you an email so we can find a time. That would be great, thank you. Yeah, copy me on that keyword and we'll work together on that. So our next agenda item is working 
Google Summer of Code here, um, I think tomorrow is the day it's due, or today? I lose track of days of the week. It is given. tomorrow. Okay. But we are done. Our application is 100% complete. We have our ideas, pages, we have everything in place. Look at us. Awesome. Okay, um, our next thing is just um, the pull request against metrics. So there's a pull request that's active um, that I put in to try to organize some of the activity metrics that have been labeled different things um, in the course of our work um, as working groups. So the growth maturity decline working group in particular changed a bunch of metrics names. And so I've done a reconciliation with the metrics repository. And there was some discussion about how to point people at that uh, correctly and name, name the ones that aren't being worked on. And I addressed all the things in the pull request. So I think Georg, or the comments that Georg made in his review. So I think it's ready to merge, which will tidy things up a bit for our work with the common metrics working group. I had to look at the name. Um, and um, so, so that's all I have on that. I don't know if there's any discussion. So I think we can just pr pr follow our, our process then, right? I'm not hearing anybody, so is nobody saying anything? Yeah, I haven't looked okay. at it in a while, so. Okay. Uh, we'll look at it again, and if it's ready, we can merge it. Okay. Yeah, and I haven't looked at it too in depth. Um, I did kind of look over the general changes you made um, and really don't have any disagreements other than what has already been brought up. So, but I'll, I'll take a closer look. Okay. Yeah, I, we want to we do it until it's right. Um, I just wanted to make a note that I'd address the consider the discussion we had last week um, and, you know, go look at it again, see, see how close we are. <clears throat> um, next item on the agenda is the working group metrics. So uh, who wants to do an update for diversity and inclusion? Since I'm taking notes, Dom, can you? No, because I missed the last meeting. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the last meeting. That, that's a good question. What did we do yesterday? Um, I'll pull up the minutes. So one of the exciting things is that uh, we have Rai who is here today as well, who is uh, on the, the community architect or Hyperledger, and Hyperledger is interested in being a guinea pig within the LF to incorporate diversity and inclusion metrics. Did, did I say that right, Ray? Yes, you got it. Perfect. Uh, other than that, we have, uh, we continue our work on the metrics and the, it's just business as usual from what I, what I see in the meeting minutes, nothing special going on. Okay. So that would conclude the update. Um, John, do you want to update the common metrics working group since we had our first meeting immediately before this one? We did. We had our first meeting an hour ago. Woo. Um, woo. So kicking off a new working group. Um, we had uh, mostly a discussion about kind of the, the purpose of the group, what we wanted to tackle. Um, the first bit that we're going to try to tackle is the organizational affiliation, which is not surprising since that was the biggest gap that we had identified that sort of encouraged us to spawn this new new working group. So we're gonna start with that and then start looking at some of the other metrics that we think are important that no one else is looking at and start start working on definitions for for those as well. So that was kind of what we did in the in the group today. 
Can you, sorry, this is a new working group. Can you give me a bit more background here? And what the actual name of it was? So it's is the it? Com Common Metrics Working Group. Working Group, yep. Um, it's also known as the sort of land of misfit metrics um, informally. Okay. That's Sean's, uh, yeah. Sean's yeah. name for it. Uh, so what we realized, orthogonal. <laughs> what we yeah. realized uh, in the past few of these weekly meetings is that, um, you know, we have a lot of traction in growth, maturity, and decline. We have a lot of traction in diversity and inclusion. And then we have a whole bunch of stuff that no one's really working on that's still really important. So things like um, or metrics around organizational affiliation um, and organizational diversity. And then we also kind of at the same time, we're having discussions around what do we do with this metrics repository, which has just loads of metrics yeah. um, that no one's working on or that some people are working on, but we don't know whether they're in GMD or in DNI and we, we don't have a good handle on this. And so what we decided was that we would spin up a, a working group to handle um, some, basically to give us some focus around some of these metrics that are important that no one's working on. So whether this uh, working group continues indefinitely, we don't know, but it's um, immediately designed to sort of solve the problem of we have a lot of important stuff that doesn't fit under GMD and it doesn't fit under, under DNI. Okay, uh, can you reach out to Daniel and myself on the organizational one, because we've done a lot of work on that area already. Organizational affiliation. Uh, yeah. Daniel Izquierdo? No, German. German. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Um, yeah. From yeah sure. Sure. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. um, if you want, uh, maybe it would be good for you just to participate in the next, uh, next meeting. So we have it on the participate page, and I'll send out a uh, an email to the group. We may actually move the date of the meeting. Right now it's on Tuesday right before this meeting, but that's not working. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a painful, it, Tuesday mornings are painful times for overlapping meetings for me. Yeah, so um, we're actually trying to see if we can, see if we can move it. But I will send a reminder about the, um, Sounds good. the agenda probably Monday. They're, they're bi-weekly, so not next week, but the following week. Okay, thanks. Sounds yeah. good. Okay. Um, so that's taken care of. The next working group is the growth maturity decline working group. Uh, we have a pretty good, we're, we're forming or solidifying our code related metrics release and we have a couple of use cases. One that Jesus I think talked with Ray about that's um, nearly ready to merge and then another use case around the community managers use case that uh, getting close to being ready to merge. So we're following, you know, the breaking out use cases and we're continuing to define metrics and um, made a good deal of progress in advance of FOSDEM and I imagine we'll, we'll reset and regroup here um, during our regular working group meeting tomorrow in the post FOSDEM world. Should we actually do a, a quick FOSDEM chaos con debrief? Yes, yes. please. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. It just it just occurred to me that we that wasn't anywhere on the agenda and it probably should be. I guess update question. I guess it's sort of the next thing. I'm not sure what was meant by that, but but yeah, go ahead. Uh okay. So was, I'll start I'll start with yeah. ChaosCon. Um so I think ChaosCon went uh went really well. Uh Thanks to Georg, who couldn't be here, but who uploaded loads of the presen presenter slides, which was awesome. So we got that um, all included. And um, Ray was our MC. Ray was our MC, which is fantastic. We had keynotes yeah. from Ildico and uh, yeah. Nithya Ruff and Brian Provitt, uh, which were all really good. Um, I thought the content was, uh, was spot on. We had Kevin videotaping it, so you will eventually be able to watch all of this as soon as that gets all rendered and, and mm. posted, which I imagine will be in a week or two, is my guess. Um, we ran a couple of tutorials that I thought went pretty well for diversity and inclusion. We actually broke people up and had them um, define some of the diversity and inclusion metrics that we hadn't gotten around to yet, and I thought that uh, some of the groups made some good progress. So I, I was really happy with, with chaos gone. I don't know if others want to chime in several <coughs> in there. Yeah. Monday. I mean, we got a lot of stuff packed into a, 
a day uh and then so which i mean which is good in, in, in that we covered a lot, we try to cover a lot of content as much as we can but uh i wish there were i mean i don't know how we we do this for the next next one uh i was thinking you know in you know in light maybe in in addition to or even instead of the lightning round talks maybe we have like an hour dedicated to sort of unconference type of discussions but I mean, the day was pretty packed, right? I mean, it maybe was. we start an hour. Yeah, maybe we start an hour early. It started at nine o'clock, but um, but I know people in Europe are traveling that morning, right? So that makes it tough. But I I thought the like you said, Don, the the workshops went really well with people participating. So uh, wish we have more time for that type of format, uh, on conference type of discussion. But yeah, I, I agree. I I thought. You know, the room was packed uh, pretty much all, all day and you know, a lot of good content and and discussions. And I also like the fact that we had a uh, decent amount of time dedicated to break so people can talk to each other. But. So what if we adopt a, a model similar to what MozFest is where sessions have to be interactive to get more of this workshoppy feel and create output? I think going forward, that's a. I like the idea of what other people think. Yeah. I think it's a little bit hard in a one track event with that yeah. many people to make it interactive. So, so the only bit that was super interactive was the, um, the tutorials. Ours was probably a bit, the work, uh, diversity and inclusion is probably a little more interactive. Hmm. It was a real challenge to manage. I'm not going to lie. It was, um, it was it was pretty difficult logistically because there were so many people to get them and to one, break out. Right, and one room as well, right? I mean, I think uh, if we go back to, I guess for FOSM, we're going back to EBIS next year so we can partition the room so we can have maybe two tracks in the afternoon. But yeah, having it just one room was definitely difficult and we had to sort of rearrange chairs and all that. But. The next chaos con should be with uh, Open Source Summit North America, and we can ask um, if we can get rooms at the conference venue there. We can get rooms at the conference venue. That was a miscommunication last time. We should have been able to get rooms. Yeah. Yeah, if we can get like two rooms or even petition the room at some point during the day, I think that that'll that should definitely help. And there we do have uh, not a classroom style setup, but usually we have options for tables and workspaces. Yeah. So I think that's good feedback to, I mean, let's do that next time. I, th I thought that everything went really well. I really enjoyed the growth, the diversity inclusion um, breakout sessions, even though they were kind of far flung. Uh, I thought the one I participated in had a lot of good discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think the report backs were helpful. And I think if you go look at the Google Docs that were developed, there's actually some work that got done um, in that case. So that was, I think, a really good model for engaging people in ChaosCon. Mm -hmm. And as the working groups for common metrics and growth maturity decline mature i mean i think that is the model that is a good model to follow because we can actually get some work done while we're in the chaos con instead of you know not you know, more active more engaged um but i thought it was good any other comments on chaos con any other agenda items that anyone wants to bring up here on our monthly chaos meeting. We're scheduled for an hour, but we don't need to use it all. Kevin, are you gonna, you're gonna send out an announcement to one of the mailing lists about the video availability when it, they come up? Uh, Kevin's Kevin not on the call, but he will. Yeah. Kevin and I will assist Kevin in doing this. We talked about um, how to do it and got the files ready. Now we need to uh, actually polish them. 
one of the things that we want to do is because the recordings are focused on the presenter is that we overlay the slides and so that there's some amount of editing in the videos to do. Yeah, I appreciate you guys doing that. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Recording is one thing, but editing and all that. But thank that you. Yeah. yeah, I think a week is ambitious. If we do one video a day, uh, it'll be two weeks. But I think we'll also start uploading them in small batches. So we'll keep you posted on the mailing list. Uh, I, I guess we didn't really talk about FOSAM, but I, I thought both, uh, uh, you know, Brian and, and Don's sessions were well attended. I mean, well presented too. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, there was definitely a chance to talk about chaos at at least a couple of sessions at, uh, at FOSAM. And, uh, and thankfully, they, they we moved to a larger room for the community track, which was nice. Uh, so... There were a lot of really good talks in the community track. I basically hung out there all day. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think I went to like four of them. Um, but yeah, I, th <laughs> I thought the community track was well done. So, I mean, Brian, I think the organizers are, I mean, at least one of them are your colleague at Red, I mean, Red Hat, just give him kudos. I will pass yeah. that along. Yeah. Yes. In addition to snacks, which was nice. <laughs> yeah. The availability yeah, of snacks. Yeah, they are snack maniacs, man. Yeah. I'm just saying. They had a huge bag full of full of nuts and chocolates and all that, which was nice. Well, that room wasn't the original room, so we were yeah. much farther away from the main uh, drag of the campus. So after all that huge walk to get there, I think they were very appreciated. Yeah. No, I, and despite I it being really challenging to find, there were several times the room was almost completely full. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually appreciated the walk, chance, to, chance for me to get out, but <laughs> <laughs> worth, worth the extra workout. <laughs> yeah, and then the other metrics talk I think that happened at FOSDEM, which I didn't catch, was uh, Daniel Izquierdo presented in the Python dev room about um, basically, I think, gender diversity in the Python community. Oh, okay. Some, I mean, something yeah. along those lines, yeah. Okay, cool. And he reported yesterday that it was also well attended and well received. Do you know if those slides are available yet? Uh, the videos are actually already available, at least for the ones in the community dev room. My video is already out. If you go to the FOSDEM page and go to the community dev room. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm actually almost start, I started watching it actually last night. Oh, nice. I, I, I went and looked for Daniels and I hadn't seen it yet because <laughs> I want to see that one too. Yeah, the the videos sort of trickle out because they um, someone has to actually review them so they can cut the beginning and end off to make sure that it's just the the bit that um, the presenter is actually doing because they record the whole the whole day. So a human has to actually look at it and approve it. And in my case, they sent it to me to approve, and I think they must have also sent it to the community. Dev room yeah. people because they were all over it and I didn't even have a chance to watch it and it was already approved and uploaded and online and which is perfect because <laughs> I don't want to be the bottleneck. Um, but yeah, yeah, mine was yeah. on mine was online in less than twenty four hours. It's awesome. That's exactly what happened because I I had the same thing. I went to finally review it and Leslie had already done it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I went to review it and says you can't you can't review it. It's already done. It's like whew, <laughs> one less thing for me to do. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So if that's um, if that's the conclusion, then I think uh, that concludes our meeting today. I have a question. Does anyone know if Boston event organizer can we use their technology next time? No. Like um, that. The, I so I've done dev room organizing. That that system is crazy automated. I mean. And I, I, you can talk to them because I know that they've taken it, like they took the FOSDEM video equipment to copy left. Exactly. After FOSDEM. And so it is theoretically possible. You just have to get a lot of um, 
you know, give them a lot of heads up and figure out what exactly is needed. But they will do it because everything they do is basically script based um, where they cut and end and then do the review process and it's all automated. So, but they're not, yeah. So give it a shot, see what happens. And then, yeah, and I'm then pretty I sure it's all custom written stuff that they've written yeah. themselves. The website's the same way. So all the CFP submission stuff is in what's called Pentabarf, um, which is, uh, I think they just call it Penta yes. now. I think they shortened it, but it used to be Pentabarf. Um, it's, it's, it's awful. Uh, <laughs> Um, to use so, so a lot of it is um, a challenge if you weren't the person who wrote it to actually use some of it so uh, I'm, just, I'm just saying your mileage may vary what they have works really really well in the context of FOSDEM with a whole bunch of volunteers that are tightly trained on how to do it um, but it works really well we could get one of those volunteers to bring the technology and spin it up as a service for us I think they can because they did do it for copy left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because trust me, you don't want to use Pentabarf if you can help it. <laughs> I'm going to take your word on that. I'm not going to go investigate that on my own. I'm not Pentabarf curious in any way. It's one of the most, you, it's like the most, it actually works programs, but it's also the worst user interface ever. That sounds like it. Well, on the notion, on the note of pentabarf, I'm going to ask if there's any other items for discussion and then, uh, you know, bid you adieu until next week. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, thanks for all the help and see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.